Mm -hmm. Time is 7.01 p.m. I'd like to call to order the special meeting of the mayor and town council for April 2nd. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> can you hear us, Susan? Yes, I can. Do you mind doing a roll call? No problem. Councilor Budraco? Here. Councilor Gonzalez? Here. Councilor Mankey? Here. Councilor Nagel? Here. Councilor Page? Here. Councilor Plord? Here. Deputy Mayor Rada? Here. Councilor Tiniakos? Here. Mayor Trister? Here. All right. Moving right along to uh, public participation on agenda items only. Um, if you are interested in participating in public participation, um, feel free to come up now. Or if you're in Zoom, please raise your hand using the uh, raise hand function. And we do have someone on Zoom. Right. Go right ahead, Miss Lyons. Hi, Rose Lyons, 46 Elton Drive. Um, I would just like to ask that you endorse the use of the ARPA funds for the replacement meals, uh, or the replacement of Meals on Wheels in the Congregate Lunch Program at the Senior and Disabled Center. I have participated in the Congregate Meals, and I also took advantage of the, the pickups that were offered during COVID for people that uh, couldn't participate in the Congregate Meal Program. And I have had family members who have participated in the Meals on Wheels program. I think it's very important for the seniors to be able to have a meal provided to them. And I know it was very important for my cousins to know that their mother was at least given one meal uh, while she was homebound. And I think it is a very important program. I don't know... Um, how much is going to be needed, but I hope that whatever it is that you will see fit to use the ARPA monies. Uh, I must say that this is one of my concerns, or was one of my concerns, is all the money was being allocated or being encumbered, or, and now we have an, a situation just like I had predicted, that there's an emergency situation that's going to need some of those monies. I'm glad that there's been some money held back. I wish more had been. But that being said, once again, I ask that you uh, endorse fully whatever the funding is that is being requested for these programs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lyons. Anybody else in the room or over Zoom that would like to uh, participate in public participation? All in once. All right. So, you know, do we have any emails correspondence, Jamie? That you know of? I don't. We did not as of five o'clock yesterday. Nothing. Very good. The deadline. So, Gail, um, you had uh, one that two weeks used. ago. There was one um, uh, regarding open space. Oh, um, okay. And she got back to me later. Um, <clears throat> the, the woman, the writer, and asked that it be included in the public record. Okay. Anybody sent it to you? I will resend it if you don't have it, but I, it was sent to it was sent to all council members. I think you I remember it. seeing it. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So moving along, uh, remarks by councilors on public participation. Any uh, comments from councilors? Stay tuned. Seeing none. All right. So we're going to move right along to uh, consideration of old business um, agenda item. 5A, uh, proposed budget adjustments. Um, as I indicated in the uh, hearing a little while ago, you know, we're not prepared to make any changes to the budget at this point in time. Um, but we did want to talk about um, sort of some of the things we're looking at and areas we're looking to make changes and sort of have that discussion a little bit tonight. Um, we've heard, um, you know, one of the things I want to make clear is We've been working collaboratively with our partners in, in, in all the different departments, but particularly the Board of Ed, in order to, to reach an agreement and reach a place with this budget that is uh, amenable to everyone's needs. Um, and we've been working collaboratively together and we'll continue to collaborate until the end. Um, 
that said, you know, I want to open, you know, sort of floor for comments and questions or thoughts and discussion items on possible changes to the budget. Councilor Mankey. Um, our side is, is working, as I'm sure your side is working on the budget. We have no changes <laughs> to make at this point. So uh, we have no um, adjustments. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Page. Thanks, Mayor. Yeah, I, I would uh, just say I appreciate the effort on the part of the Board of Education, the superintendent, the Board of Ed, um, Amy Prouty, the chair, and um, all of their staff to work with us. We still have questions, and they've been responding to those questions so we can understand their budgeting process more, more effectively, more thoroughly, so we can make informed decisions. And um, I, th I think there's great room to be optimistic and, and to feel good about where we're going to land here. I also appreciate our acting town manager, Jamie, and all the departments, and uh, Janet Murphy, without you, I, I would be completely lost, um, more than I usually am. And um, <laughs> um, so we're getting there, and we feel very positive. It's, it's going to be a, a good result for the schools and for the town and for our taxpayers. I think there's going to be some good balance struck. So that's all. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilor Page. Councilor Tiniakis. Yeah, um, yeah. This has been said before, but I want to just make it known because it's been brought up a few times. But um, as we're working on the budget, myself and I assume the rest of the council all is on the same page that we're we really want to get a board of edge budget that doesn't include any kind of cuts to staffing whatsoever. Um, we're working pretty hard to get there. Um, there is a path forward that we think will lead us there, but it's just going to take a little bit more time. But I just want to reiterate that that. Um, we're not looking to have anyone lose their jobs or, or impact you know the students' um, education in that way. Thank you, Councilor Tinnakis. Councilor Plourd. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll just reiterate a bit of what's already been said um, around our discussions with the Board of Education, um, in particular, because uh, many folks you know are interested with good reason in in that budget, especially um, uh, that portion of the budget, I should say. Um, the, the conversations have been uh, very collaborative and fruitful, it seems, and productive. Um, and um, I, I just am so grateful for the work that our superintendent does and the work that our that uh, the leadership over at the Board of Ed does as well um, in very close coordination with uh, with Janet and, and with Jamie and with other town staff. Um, it's, it's really been wonderful to see such a collaborative uh, process. Um, as far as the uh, budget goes writ large, I think we're all very cognizant that the cost of living in our community and most communities um, across our state, across the country, um, is untenable for a lot of families um, and is really difficult. And folks are having to make very tough decisions between very important parts of their lives. Um, and so I think we're cognizant that um, uh, any increase needs to demonstrate um, with good reason why that increase is there um, and what our residents, what the taxpayer is getting out of it. Um, and we've done our due diligence and are going to continue to to make sure that um, that we can be clear about that so that we can be clear about that ourselves. Um, and so that we can share that with the public as well, uh, because folks deserve to know where their tax dollars are going. Um, and uh, that's what this process all, is all about. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor Plotin. Deputy Mayor Rada. <clears throat> yeah, without um, being repetitious, uh, I first want to thank the folks who were here for the public hearing. And we listen, we're cognizant, we, we're, we're all residents of Newington. So we, we understand the dilemmas that people face and we try to be equitable with each one of the departments and the Board of Ed, we have been diligent in deliberating and really taking a hard look at what we can do to make sure that we have a budget that is equitable and that will serve well, not only our community and our residents, but also all the departments, the Board of Ed, Newington Public Schools. Um, you will see what we've been up to soon. Um, we've been uh, speaking and we've been combing over this and thanks to um, Jamie and also to Janet. Um, 
who have given us a tremendous amount of, of information, uh, answered questions, and we've had a lot. They're patient. Um, and they've been very patient. We appreciate that. Um, and we hope that the community will be patient as well so that when we are ready to present our budget and to vote on our budget, it will be the best possible document that we feel that we will have to bring forward to our community. Thank you, Deputy Murata. Uh, Councilor Madrigo. Um, again, uh, echoing what the rest of the council has said, um, certainly the Board of Education um, has, um, it, it, it's, it's primary it's of utmost importance that we um, that we fund the needs so that our children um, can grow into um, responsible um, citizens that will contribute to you know Newington they say in Newington or wherever they go that certainly is is key but then again we also have to recognize and I do appreciate other town departments who um, have needs as well. And I think everybody has had to sacrifice. Um, as we went through the budget process, I know there are um, departments who um, really, really took a very hard look at their budget in order to try and submit something to Jamie that made sense and did not cut services, um, but yet necessarily did not get all the wishes and wants that um, every department wanted as well. And as we have to, not only do we have to look at the current situation today in Newington of, of our tax base, of our residents, but we also have to um, look to the future. Um, uh, the next couple of years are, uh, you know, I, I don't, in my pocketbook and, you know, they say inflation is down, but it can't prove it by my pocketbook <laughs> um, and by the prices of, of, basic goods and services, utilities, whatever. So everyone's going to have to, um, everyone's going to have to suffer a little, but for the greater good of everybody. Um, and I'm, um, but I'm hopeful that we can all work together to come up with something that will keep Newington um, affordable and attractive um, and, and meet the needs and maybe give some wants here and there as well. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Nagel. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, it's always difficult to follow Councillor Bedraco, uh, and I appreciate all that she said uh, and those that spoke before. Now, I know you were talking about your side of the aisle, our side of the aisle, and what we have, have been trying to do. We have yet to negotiate together, but I assume that some of the comments that, that uh, different people here have made applies to all of us. While we may not be... Um, conscious or of the details where well, there may be an agreement here um there may be some things that uh, um have been thought of by each side of the aisle the other hadn't thought of that will help to uh, resolve or to uh, uh, clarify or be a win-win for the community uh and all of us on the council as has been mentioned this is uh, a very difficult time for the populace at large uh, and we have the difficult decision about uh, what to expend and what not to expend. And uh, we need to be cognizant of the fact of, of all the citizens that we represent uh, in town. And hopefully um, after our, our next meeting, when I assume most of the adjustments, if not all, are going to be made, uh, we can find some kind of common ground that... Uh, um, will be positive for many, or at least recognize if something is, is cut or not funded as much that it's, uh, um, it's because there are other elements of town that are important too. Um, and um, I hope that uh, we will all at least recognize the realities of uh, the economy at this present time uh, generally that uh, will lead us to make some difficult decisions that uh, we need to resolve by the, the 16th of April, which uh, of course uh, of course, it's before some decisions are made as we've talked about before, or we've listened before with the state in terms of funding that we get and, and monies that uh, come back that may come back or not come back. So uh, uh, we will do our due diligence, uh, all of us and 
uh, hopefully uh, uh, it will be a, at least something that everyone can recognize that's for the best interests of the, of the people in this town and not just one element uh, in town over another or one department over another. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Nagel. Councilor Mackey. Uh, budgets are hard. Um, probably no, no surprise to you folks now if you've gone through this a few times and looked at the book. It reminds me of my favorite line from the musical 1776 where Ben Franklin says, decisions are always easy when somebody else is making them. <laughs> and that's really what budgets are. When someone else, you, you, you can ask 20 people in the, in the grocery store and they'll have 20 different reasons why they should support this or that. But it's hard when you're making the decision. And then nine of us have to make decisions um, that affect not just the Board of Ed, but human services, the fire department, the police department, ambulance, and, and all the, the gamut of, of, of uh, services this town provides. And, and budgets are hard. They're not easy. And I guess if you do it well, nobody's happy. And if you if you do it wrong, everybody's happy. And then, then <laughs> that can't be right. So. Thank you, Councilor Mankey. Councilor Page. Thanks, Mayor. Just a, a couple more comments. I know we spoke last week at the um, high school uh, career day about getting together at some point. And then we had Easter and we've been swamped. Everybody's been swamped. So, but that offer still stands to come together and, and look at you know each other's crib notes. And, and I think what we're gonna find um, both between now and then, but also on the ninth is that there's a lot more in common. And that it isn't gonna be us and them or one side of the aisle or another. I think we're gonna build consensus and see that we share many, many, many um, uh, things in common in terms of our budget decisions. And I, I think, That'll send an important signal to the town that we're working in a united fashion to make this the best budget we can for everyone involved. So I look forward to that. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Page. Any more comments on this? Very good. We will move along to uh, 5B, uh, American Rescue Plan Act ARPA allocations. What's this one? What's that? What's that? You want to do you want to explain a little bit of that one? Sure, if it's okay, and if, if yes, you don't please. mind, if Barbara Wilmer comes up too, oh, sure. the yeah, acting absolutely. senior center director. No, <laughs> no, no as long as okay. you're here. <laughs> this item was brought up. Um, well, not not the ARPA funds, but the the reductions to the nutrition program for the senior and disabled center. I brought it up during my comments at, at last week's council meeting. Um, and in the past week, Barbara's done a tremendous amount of work on this item, and I, we've gathered a lot of information. So we want to present to you tonight exactly what's going on with these nutrition program reductions and what the plan is to address them um, from various sources. So as I mentioned last week, um, recently, probably like maybe two weeks ago now, the community renewal team notified us that there would be significant cuts to the Meals on Wheels home delivery program and the congregate lunch in-person program at the Senior Disabled Center. Um, CRT administers those programs, but they are funded through a combination of federal and state funding as part of the federal nutrition, elderly nutrition program, as well as donations and fundraising. Um, we were notified that due to severe budget shortfalls at the, at the community renewal team, they were going to be reducing Meals on Wheels home delivery service and the in-person congregate effective Monday, April 8th. So less than a week from now. Um, the cuts to the Meals on Wheels program, including eliminating the dinner meals. So people who are on Meals on Wheels receive a lunch, but several people, many people, receive a second meal, a dinner as well. It's also, it's delivered by volunteers every day, Monday through Friday, but many people receive these meals seven days a week. Um, so, you know, it's quite a bit. It turned, it comes out to be about 207 meals per week, home delivered meals per week lost under these cuts. Um, and then in the congregate side, they are reducing. I, can you just explain for me, oh. maybe the public, what, what, what is congregate mean? Okay, congregate is a, I know, it's, it's a, unnecessarily large word to say in-person meals. <laughs> so there's a, a hot lunch is served at the senior center every day, Monday through Friday. Um, people congregate, which is, I guess, why it's called congregate. I'm guess, guessing. So um, the congregate meal is served every day. It's a hot meal that's served, provided by CRT and served by our volunteers to adults age 60 plus. CRT is reducing service meal service from five days per week to three and in addition, on the three days in which meals are served, they're reducing the number, capping the number of meals available to 27. I can get a little more into this later, but essentially we serve more than 27 people a day. 
Um, the elder, the nutrition program is available to adults at, over the age of 60. The Meals on Wheels program you need to qualify for based on need and the folks who, who receive Meals on Wheels need it. They are folks who are sick or um, frail, recovering from injury or illness. Sometimes people are on it for a short period of time and sometimes they're on it for the duration of their, of their life. Um, they are people who cannot prepare their own food, who may have very specific dietary needs, who would be at risk uh, for food insecurity if they don't have these <clears throat> meals available. The congregate meals also provide assurance against food insecurity and also provide something just as important, which is um, socialization and the opportunity to interact with people and, and the staff to interact with them as well. The congregate program is available to anybody age 60 plus, and the Meals on Wheels program is available to, like I said, those who qualify who are over age 60. There are no financial requirements to participate in either program, but we can say that many who participate in both are on the low income side, and many, most, if not many, if not most, are on fixed incomes. Um, CRT asks for a $3 donation per meal. We do not handle any of the billing or the or any of that. You know, it's all done by CRT. They never turn away anybody who cannot um, pay. So that means that these meals per CRT cost between eleven and fifteen dollars a piece. Eleven dollars more on the eleven dollars side for the home delivery and fifteen dollars for the in person lunch. So that means that the remaining eight to twelve dollars is heavily subsidized by the federal and state funding as well as the donations um, and the fundraising. So we are looking at, based on what they have indicated to us for the cuts, uh, 314 meals lost per week for the next 24 weeks through the end of their fiscal year, which is October 1st, 2024. Um, that calculates to a total of 7,500 meals lost over the next 24 weeks if we're not replaced. The estimated cost to replace these meals, should we replace them at CRT's indicated cost of $11 to $15 per meal, would be about $95,000. Uh, we do not have money in our operating budget to cover that. As I mentioned last, last week, our operating budget is about $20,000 a year outside of, budget, outside of uh, salaries. Um, we have a revenue fund for donations, which also would not cover this for long term. Um, but we are certainly committed to, even with this minimal notice to not turning away anybody for any meal. Um, so in order to do that, we need to we need some help. Um, we are looking, Barbara can talk a little bit more in a second about what she's doing. She's done a tremendous job just completely shifting gears over the past week and reaching out and starting a community effort to for donations and fundraising, both from private citizens, but also from local restaurants. And she's working with, the, I think she's reached out to the schools. Um, and uh, there's senior housing facilities in the area, not necessarily Newington, but some of them are who, who can help us. Um, for the Meals on Wheels, as I mentioned, a lot of people are on very specific diets who receive these home delivered meals. They might perhaps need to have a low sodium diet, perhaps a, you know low, no sugar. There's all sorts of different things. Some people need their food ground up um, who receive it. So we are not able to produce home delivered meals on wheeled food and house, nor would it really be appropriate for us to replace those meals with meals from a restaurant or grinders or donated meals from somebody because of the very specific dietary needs that the recipients have. We don't have a nutritionist on staff. We don't have, you know, we don't have the means to, to replace those. So my recommendation is that we replace those meals by purchasing them from CRT at the $11 per meal. So for that, again, we would need funding. We would need donations or funding from the council. The congregate meals, the ones that are in person, we have a little bit more flexibility with. We can, we can, be, you know, we could provide whichever, whatever food we'd like and whatever food we think that the recipients would enjoy. Um, as I mentioned before, on the three days that they will serve meals, it's capped at 27. But, and I believe it was Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, they're going to serve meals. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, they're going to serve meals. On Thursdays alone, we usually get 60 people. So we are not looking to turn away 
half of the people that want to come and have a meal that day. So we are going to request the CRT to actually only receive meals two days per week and combine the 27. So we'll have 54 one day instead of 27. Still the same number of meals per week. It doesn't change how many meals we're losing or how many we need to make up with donations, but it makes it a little bit um, more logistically better for us to combine it in that matter. And then just fill that additional day per week with donated or purchased food. So the way we propose to cover the cost of these meals is to ask the town council allocate some ARPA funding. Uh, it's an emergency. Um, it's something we don't really have a lot of time to go elsewhere to find this funding. It starts in less than a week. We're asking that you would consider allocating $40,000 from the ARPA funding to get us started. Again, Barbara will talk quite a bit about the donations that, that we're working, that she's working on. She's 100% of the card on this that she's working on. And a little later in the agenda, you're going to see that senior centers have been allocated throughout the state, have been allocated ARPA dollars as well, that's separate from what you've already considered for the town, that Newington is going to, Newington Senior Center is going to get $90,000 in ARPA funding, which cannot be used, and again, we'll explain this more in detail at the next agenda item, but it has specific things that must be used for, um, pursuant to requirements by the state unit on aging. Very, very excited about receiving $90,000 for items that we normally wouldn't be able to put into our budget um, and have a lot of plans for it, but we do need to reprioritize. And I'm going at an upcoming meeting, uh, we will ask you to allocate some of our ARPA funding for meal replacement as well. Um, longer term plans, if we are able to, so of that, that's 75,000 of the approximately $95,000, we would need to replace these meals in, in full. If the community responds and is very generous and we're able to raise more donations than the $20,000 we're estimating. What I would do is encumber the ARPA funds by the end of the year as required and then put them aside in case we should have some shortfalls over the next two years. We will have a savings account in place to cover meals on a short, you know, on little to no notice. There is, I don't want to um, speculate, but there is some concern that the funding shortfalls will go past the beginning of CRT's fiscal year on October 1st, which means this could potentially extend past uh, into the fall, or it could happen again next year. We've had, CRT has experienced budget shortfalls in the past, but they've been minimal compared to these drop in a bucket compared to what we're, we're dealing with. Just before the pandemic, they closed for five days for congregate lunch at the end of their fiscal year, five days in total. They closed every Wednesday, um, you know, through the end of August and September. That we were able to replace because you know, area, nursing homes, donated pizzas and everything else. But replacing five days worth of meals versus replacing 7,500 meals, you know, is a significantly larger um, effect to the town. This affects many senior centers throughout the state. Anybody who uses the North Central Area Agency on Aging as its fiduciary and as part of the federal nutrition program is also affected by this. So that is most of the senior centers in the Hartford and Tallinn counties. Um, Newington is very much affected because again, we are one of the largest congregate meal sites in the, in the region and also have over 60 people per day who receive meals on wheels. Um, so now, unless you have any questions about our, our plan, I, Barbara can talk a little bit about what she's working on. Okay, thank you. Um, so, so far what I've done is uh, written a donation letter uh, that's been distributed to local businesses um, and our collaborative partners. Uh, we've asked for meals, parts of meals and monetary donations, um, which will be used to purchase meals. The letter was included in the Chamber of Commerce email newsletter last week um, and posted on Facebook by the chamber, which I'm sure many of you saw. It was also shared by the Democratic Town Committee. So I've reached out to the head of the culinary department at the high school, uh, as well as local assisted living communities to discuss purchasing meals at cost. Uh, I've also read out, reached out to the grocery stores asking for do donations of food items. We cannot cook at the senior center because we don't have a license to do so. We can only keep things warm or cold. So uh, no cooking for us. Um, as a result of making the community aware, uh, I've had commitments from three collaborative partners uh, to um, donate meals uh, once per month for the duration of this, which is great. Um, also, we, are, we have received uh, donations from community members as well. 
totaling $600 so far, but it's only been a few days. So um, I've also fielded a lot of calls from residents um, with questions about this. So I expect that the community will help us. I think they want to help us. I was out there today dropping off letters and talking to uh, managers at local restaurants and they're very much on board and helping us. And as Jamie said, we're not the only other senior center that is affected by this. Um, because we all communicate, some of the other centers are employing a variety of methods, um, including um, asking their communities for either meal donations or monetary donations. Um, some of them have licenses to cook, so they can do that. Uh, they've also reached out to their school systems to either donate meals or or purchase, say, milk from the from the school at a low cost, um, and also asking their uh, towns for a small amount of funding as well. So it sounds like we're all doing a lot of common common things. Yeah. I have a few folks with questions. Uh, Councillor Page, thanks, Mayor. Just to clarify, the North Central Area Agency on Aging, they manage or distribute these funds? Is that, and so the funds come primarily from the feds or also from the state? The funds come from a variety of sources, federal funding, state funding from various state agencies, the $3 suggested donation, which CRT collects, and they do some fundraising. Um, CRT does some fundraising. So the funding comes from many different places. Like I said, the NCAA is the fiduciary. Um, they receive and manage, I suppose, the, the funding, and it goes to CRT, who manages their own cost to produce and deliver the food. Because I just, and I think we've all agreed, I know we talked about this just now or at five in agenda setting and as a council with the mayor, uh, we plan to to make a statement uh, collectively and, and and address that to any of the powers that be that fund uh, this important endeavor. I just think, and I think I can speak for everybody, we find this unacceptable that uh, we're, we're in this emergency crisis affecting the livelihoods of our residents who are some of the most vulnerable as you are, I've already said, and I, I don't know, just a couple of other comments and then I'll stop. Um, I think we need to send a signal. This is not acceptable at all. And um, two things. Uh, one is if you could speak to the, in addition to the obvious nutritional benefit to the, but to the psychosocial benefit of Meals on Wheels and having an individual knock on the door and say hello to someone who may be isolated and medically at risk and so forth. So the psychosocial benefits of it that people may be missing out as a result of this unnecessary crisis. And also, um, what is it that the senior center will potentially not receive that's so important in shifting those funds, which is so thoughtful and caring, obviously, but I would want to make sure there's a council that we hear what, what impact that would have unintended consequences on the senior center. So thanks. So a, a little bit of good news is the Meals on Wheels recipients will still get one meal instead of two. So the knocks on the doors are still happening, but they're only getting half of the meals that they should be um, according to, you know, their, their, their needs and their, what program that they are on. Um, I don't want to go out of order on the agenda, but you have a list under new business of all the, all the opera requests for the senior center funding um, that we could look at when it's appropriate. Council Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am just kind of curious as to how in the middle of a budget cycle for mm. the, um, was it greater? CRT. What is CRT. Um, I can understand maybe at, you know, the last week or two, but this is like the middle of a budget cycle to be that short. Right. Um, right. Uh, funded is to me, there's something really wrong with the way they planned. Um, yeah. How did you know how that happened or? We don't. Um, I will say that Barbara and I both attended an informational session with CRT staff oh, like a week and a half ago now. Um, and somebody in attendance at that meeting asked that question. And the CRT staff in attendance said we were unaware either. And that's that's all the information that they really offered. Okay, which actually makes me worried that um, when the new budget cycle starts, whether they're going to be able to resume full um, full operation and how much you can really rely on that. Um, so uh, and that's just a general comment, but secondarily, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you're doing this, but I know that you said for the congregate meals, you know, you might be working with the school system, let's say, but what happens during the summer when the school is out? Um, 
it's I mean you only have like about a month or so to do that unless there was a way to um I don't know because they have a culinary program at the school and maybe they could have a summer school I mean I don't know I'm sure there or the, the cafeteria at least could be kept open the, the kitchen I'm sure there's a way it can be worked out with um for an emergency like this and also um uh, I don't know can you utilize anything from food share I mean Oh, well, we can't we can't cook food, so right. we might be able to get food items, maybe fruit or um, well, the bread and, or, and bread. And, yeah, right. mm -hmm. we used to use that for the yeah. agency I used to work at. Um, and again, um, we'll all keep our thinking caps on to get you the funds you needed because, uh, as, as Councilor Page said, um, you're, I shouldn't even make this political comment, but um, I understand that the state overall is working, is looking at a um, non-income restricted um, meals for all students, breakfasts and lunches, no income limits, whatever. And, and that's wonderful, but yet we have now something being taken away from some very vulnerable populations. And I think if the state has to look at, okay, maybe in the future we can give free lunches, free breakfasts, whatever, to end all students. But for now, you've got to divert some of those funds and, you know, keep it, you know, targeted towards our senior population as well. Um, any reduction to meals, you know, never mind 7,500, but any reduction to meals um, can potentially cause food insecurity, particularly to the Meals on Wheels folks, even though they might still be getting their lunch. They have, most of them, if they're not able to shop or prepare, some of them don't have any family to help them. It really does create the potential for them to not have a nutritious meal. Uh, for dinner, even if they get their lunch, it's still um, still an issue. The social isolation component concern really comes in with the congregate uh, because there are people that come in solely for lunch every day to sit and have lunch and talk. And we do programs and we offer information. You know, it's it's a great way to keep in contact with people. So that's where we're concerned about people. You know, we saw during the pandemic that was one of the biggest. Um, I think the most painful things that we that during the, that occurred during the pandemic was when people couldn't come for lunch anymore. We saw, you know, a lot of people really ha ha struggling with that um, during that time. So to remove that is definitely a concern. Councilor Clark. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to echo a lot of what Councilor Bedrako said. I, I mean, I, and, and uh, Councilor Page that it's just entirely unacceptable, entirely unacceptable. Um, I, I, one question that I have, um, and I do have another question when we get to the portion of the agenda around the 90,000 in ARPA, but I'll, I will hold until then on that question. Um, uh, around the Meals on Wheels, and, and I mean for congregate as well, but the Meals on Wheels, it seems like we're just gonna eat the increase with very good reason, as you state. Um, as far as our work with CRT goes, I mean, when they're setting their budgets and they're moving through the process of allocating um, what they're allocating and determining what that number will be, do they work closely? And I imagine the answer is yes, but I'm just curious. Do they work closely with local area senior centers, with the area agencies on aging? Has that been a, an issue in the past, the, you know, the degree to which they have collaborated? Because it just, it just strikes me that they make decisions of such astronomical consequence and to have a shortfall of that kind with no accountability other than, and I support it, but other than a strongly worded letter is very, very concerning. So uh, I, I just, that's my question. What, what's the degree of accountability and collaboration that happens with CRT as I set those numbers? I have not been you know, asked anything about Meals on Wheels. I think they make all those decisions. Um, so to the best of my knowledge, there's no collaboration between uh, the municipalities and CRT. And I can't recall a time where they've reached out and asked for our ideas or our input. They occasionally ask for feedback from recipients. Um, they provide training materials, food safety materials, but no. No, we don't, I don't believe we work collaboratively in that regard. Thank you for that. I mean, that's, that in its own right is disappointing, I think. Um, and, you know, I, I, in my ignorance, I don't fully understand CRT's programs and you are educating, I think, all of us on 
something we ought to be a lot more educated on because it makes an outsized impact on a ton of residents' lives. Um, so um, I guess I'll just say thank you for the very quick work that you've done. Um, and uh, again, I'll save my other question for later. Thank you. Councilor Mankey. Um, I thank you for your efforts for good contributions um, from the area of businesses. And, and my, my experience of contributions are they good right now. Uh, but come September, people are going to forget about the contribution. There's something else that come up, and and so, so relying on contributions, I don't think is is it's a way to get by the shortfall. But I think overall, we have a bigger problem than just just this one particular shortfall, um, and also ripple effect. I think you know, if, if a business contributes to this, they're not contributing to something else. And there's a, there's only so much charity out there that, that a business can afford to 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 uh, expend. And so they give it to this, they don't give it to this, they don't give it over here. Um, this is certainly a problem and we certainly have to deal with it uh, quickly. Um, my also concern is I, I, if a, a company like CRT in the middle of their site budget cycle says we have no more money, we're closing up, we have a bigger problem because I, I, I have very little faith they're going to be here next year. If they, if they, they, they were that out of whack. Some, I mean, somebody must be counting the money uh, and seeing where the money goes. And all of a sudden, someone had to say, to, to say within two weeks we're, we're stopping meals is, I think, a, a symptom of, of, of poor management on their part. Uh, I, I think it's, it's. Um, it, I, I would not be surprised if, if we're sitting here next year with this, the same problem, only the CRT isn't around anymore. They've just gone away. Because if they're stopped, if they're not doing meals, they're not hiring staff. So they're laying all the staff off, I assume, or most of the staff off, and they're not going to come back in October because they just had, sort of hung around. Um, I think it's a bigger problem if than, unless I'm mistaken. I, I don't know how CRT is going to address the budget shortfall in, uh, in terms of their staffing. Um, they're still producing some meals because they're not 100% but cutting, but, but it's fewer minimal. Meals. So Correct. if I was a business owner and I'm producing half my meals, I don't, yeah. I don't need half my staff. Right. So I don't know how the, so, so CRT, if you're not familiar, they're a 501c3 nonprofit that um, based out of Hartford and they have divisions for nutrition and housing and what else, a couple of other things too. Um, so this is the nutrition division of that. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to address their staffing and their expenses and their building and utilities and everything on their end. The only way they save money is to have to let something go. And I, I assume it, it's going to be staff. But anyway, uh, we talked about it. Everybody talked about it, I think. But I think I would would like this council to direct the mayor, the town manager, and Mrs. Wilmer to, to draft a letter um, to our, our, our federal delegation, our state delegation, um, that we would all sign individually. I think it's important. It, it has more impact if there's nine signatures on there than just a signature saying, you know, the Newington Town Council. Um, and I would, would ask you to, to draft that letter within a couple of days. I think it's important. This is a, a critical problem. I hope, I hope it gets out. We can get the letter back out. Even if we can get it out by our next council meeting, which is next Tuesday, we can all sign it. Um, I would, would ask the council to direct that to happen. And I would also suggest that we send that same letter to all those other uh, uh, yeah. um, in, in Tolland and in Hartford County who are affected, all those other communities and, and towns, send them a draft of our, send them a copy of our letter so they know that we're taking action. Maybe they'll start taking action. And who knows, maybe enough action gets taken. Someone says, we've got to look at this because right now I think nobody's looking at it and it's just, just going. We can also share whether Barbara and I are involved with CASP, which is the uh, a professional association for senior center professionals. Um, so we can also utilize them to help spread the word as well and get the word out. So, so if you we'll, have we'll that, and, I, I don't want to give anybody homework. I didn't mind giving the board of bed homework. Like. <laughs> but uh, we have a letter. Draft I think we should sure. we should have be able to have a draft within a couple of days, and, and we should all you know I, I'll come in and sign it. I'll, I'll you know I'll make time to give and sign yeah. sign the letter. Councilor Mankey. Councilor Tiniakis. Uh, yep. Yeah, uh, my, my comments are going to be in the same ball field as Councilor Mankey. So um, I think it's obvious that we have to take action on this and um, keep the meals going. Um, but I did want to ask, like, um, to, to that same degree, have, have you and the other communities started to think about reaching out to, like, state and federal delegates to try and persuade them to help out or anything like that? Um, so CRT actually provided a template letter for our members to write their elected officials. Um, so that has been available for our members that come in if they'd like to do so. So we have um, encouraged that. Well, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Rada. 
Yeah, um, a very close family member um, received Meals on Wheels for, for a time. So I understand how critical that is in someone's life. I think I'm, I'm echoing some, some of what um, Councillor Tiniakos uh, has just said and Councillor Mankey. It sounds as though, from, from what you said, that CRP was a bit surprised and taken aback that they were, they were seeing that their funding was being cut as well. So it leads me to think that, again, we need to look on state level and at the federal level. And have you reached out to our legislators? Uh, have either, either federally or in Hartford? And have you heard anything back? Is there any information that you could provide? We've kept the state legislators apprised of this. Basically, the same information we sent to you was also sent to them. Um, and we had a brief uh, Zoom meeting with them just to kind of give them a heads up about how this actually impacts Newington. I don't really have an answer. And I know that they're very concerned about it, but I don't have like, any specific answers as to what like their plan of action would be at this point. Okay, um, and uh, Larson, I, I know he is very much, he speaks out very, very frequently and, and very aggressively about social security and has, has a real concern about older adults. Um, it sounds as though we're seeing money trickling down from the feds to the state level through NCAA, which I've, I've worked with over the years for, for for quite a long time uh, to see where 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 this where this gap has taken place where where all of this started because what we're seeing now is I hate to use the term but trickle down and it's the communities and the people that are the most vulnerable and need it the most <laughs> excuse me as you both know um, that are now being so negatively impacted. Deputy Mayor, uh, Councilor Nagel. Thank you. Um, I echo my the concern of what many of us needles to say about this problem, which uh, it just baffles me as to how, how it could happen, could happen so quickly. Um, aside from the letter that hopefully we, we won't be able to sign and be able to, to get the ball rolling, uh, going to the local areas also that I think should go to the state in and fed, federal as well. Uh, Mr. Larson, I understand, has uh, had to cancel a recent, recent visit about other things. Let's hope we can have him back real soon <laughs> so the public can, if not us, can be able to tell him uh, personally. Um, I feel very pessimistic given what's happened that this is going to get resolved uh, uh, through, other, through other means. And I really feel for you and for us that we, we are trapped in terms of how to handle this uh, situation uh, that has developed. Um, you've probably thought of this already, but I think we need to, given uh, there may not be a other windfall solutions all of a sudden that we should, uh, um, the senior center and, and if needed, we as a council should develop long range plans to be able to tackle this or to uh, see what we can do with our within our means, either through whatever power for lack of a word we may have or whatever funds that we can amass or suggest that, that others uh, bring forth for this cause. It is really something that just cannot be ignored or uh, dismissed as I know we all agree on. Um, so, um, would like us hopefully to, to call, come forth uh, to give assistance, be it letters being signed beyond what has already been mentioned, and to uh, get more specifically in contact with Mr. Larson, hopefully uh, once again be able to maybe be there when he has a visit uh, in person about whatever he wants to be here for. I, I know him from the past, uh, even before he got into politics, so um, I know he will listen. Um, so please keep us in contact in terms, and I don't just mean this is a, I'm just saying it and you do it, uh, with long range plans, because uh, I and I'm certain others here and all of us uh, would like to be able to develop long range plans and be able to see how we can fit into them 
so that if this happens again or it continues, that we can effectively find a means to uh, to fund at least what what you what you have been doing uh, and uh, uh, to make this uh, uh, an answer for lack of a better word to uh, to make certain that this kind of shortfall doesn't happen again uh, that vitally can uh, affects the lives of so many people who uh, don't have alternatives. Thank you, Councilor. There isn't a question there. It's just. <laughs> thank you, Councilor. Uh, Councilor Gonzalez. Um, I just wanted to thank you guys for jumping in and immediately trying to find some solutions to this. Um, I agree with everybody. It's just unacceptable. Um, we need to be able to feed these, the seniors. And um, if the public wants to help out the community, I know you said that they can make donations. Um, can you just maybe let everyone know how they can do that. And also um, the letter, the template letter, would that be helpful for our community to also um, send letters? And what, what can they do to jump on board with us? Because I, I think they're very concerned as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so if someone wants to make a donation, they can drop off or uh, mail a check into the senior center, make it out to the town of Newington and put um, meals, congregate meals in the memo. Uh, we're open Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30, if they want to drop it off. Um, and then also we have the templates available um, for them. I can mail them to people if they want to use them. I could, you know, if they want to come pick one up again. Okay. Yeah, Would you be able to maybe send those to us and we can help distribute those, whether it's yeah. via social media or whatever? Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Gonzalez, Councilor Mackey? Um, I just, seeing this is old business, I think we should make, we should actually make a formal motion to, to draft a letter so that it, it comes as a council motion. Um, so I would move that the council direct Mayor Trister, Acting Town Manager Tevian, and Senior Center Representative Mrs. Barbara Womer to draft a letter expressing our concerns uh, over the, the proposed cuts in, in the budget and, and the meals from CRT. I'll second that. And I would suggest we have that done within, it, it, by no later than next Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Um, but if it, I'm sure if it's done earlier, I'm sure we would all be happy to line up on on, on, on Jamie's office and sign our individual. But I would think it should be into the signatures and, and go out to the, our delegations uh, and, and all area towns. Sorry, it's a kind of a wind. I think you can hope we got that, Susan, but <laughs> I'll write it down for you later. <laughs> a motion by uh, Councilor Mankey, seconded by Councilor Nagel. Any discussion? No. No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion carries unanimously. Um, on that vein, I mean, I, I think, you know, for myself, you know, there's, there's very few opportunities where you can really kind of put a fix as quickly as you can. And, you know, when, when it, with the issue we're talking about right now is people missing meals. I am not comfortable with one person missing one meal. Um, what can we do in addition to a letter tonight? Is we need ARPA funding? Um, how much can we appropriate? And would that be? Uh, I mean, I know it's not a long-term solution, uh, and it's not necessarily. Um, it's obviously going to be a reoccurring expense, but again, the threat of people missing meals is so, you know, pretty cut and dry. I mean, got to eat. <laughs> so. Um, I mean, what, what can we do in that front? Um, I appreciate it. In the memo, I think I asked for you to consider $40,000 out of general town ARPA funding. That's enough to get us started. Definitely a Band-Aid, but given the time frame we're looking at, we need to do something immediately. And I believe that funding would be available um, to encumber Janet's nodding head, yes, um, so that we could next week, we could start replacing meals on next Monday. Right. Um, again, later in the packet, there's some other ideas regarding um, senior center specific CIP funding, but the 40, which you can, you don't need to take action on tonight, but that 40,000 will be sufficient to get us going. So we could see, you know, we can take more from the senior center ARPA and then see how we're doing for contributions and donations. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Mankey. I, 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 I guess I'm, I'm, I'm befuddled because there's, a, there's an agenda item in between these two big important items. Um, I would have preferred, rather have both of them together or you know, all together. So, 
and not, and not to spoil, you know, not a spoiler alert, but not to jump ahead. But so you're in, on the next item, not the next, the next after the the ball field item, you're asking for money from your C your ARPA funds, and you're asking for how much? Thirty five thousand. Okay, I would propose we take the whole seventy five thousand out of the ARPA funds here and let and let, let you do what you want to do with your funds. We've given our fund money to everybody in there and, 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 and their brother. Sure. And you guys seem to be the, you know, the last ones coming to us. So if I would propose we take the whole 75,000 from the town ARPA funds and let you keep your ARPA fund whole and use it as you need it for programming. Do we, we have funding to do that? Good. Is that a motion? Because I second it. I'll make another motion. A, a motion. <laughs> There's a resolution in your packet. Oh, yeah, we have, oh, well, yeah, we have a resolution. <laughs> I'm with you, Tim. Mr. Mayor, if I may be. You want to, you want to Wait, so like, we'll, we'll, let's get maybe have some questions here. Patrick, if you could just hold the motion, Council Mike. Because I think just think there are a couple other hands. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. okay. Can I counsel for I was just going to say, I'm glad you bring it up. This was going to be exactly my question. And when we got to the 90,000, I agreed that it's good we talked about it. But, um, uh, you know, my question is, I, I mean, I, I think it's, um, I agree. I think we ought to preserve the ARPA that you have uh, set aside for these other really important purposes. I mean, going through the packet that you presented, um, these aren't, you know, fixing a couple squeaky wheels here. These are very important parts of your operations and your programming. Um, and I, and um, I'm, I'm, I think are a very good use of ARPA funds. And so um, that being said, Given that this that it's clear this is likely not a um, a one time thing that this is this band aid will be a band aid for a much larger wound that's opening up clearly. I, I'm interested in one question I have for you, Janet. Is um, as far as ARPA goes, I, I mean, I'm in favor of appropriating the four, forty thousand in ARPA, but beyond that, to preserve the rest of your ARPA. What would we need to do as a council to look internally into our our budget restrictions? Could, would we need to do a budget transfer? Would we need to do a special appropriation? What would we have to do to find that money in house rather than take it from ARPA, which is another one time funding source, um, and supplement what is it that thirty five thousand that you've requested transferred from your other ARPA, uh, you know, into this purpose? I mean, I, I'm I'm open to that and interested in that. I don't know how feasible it is given your very tight timeline here. We want to make sure though that you have the wherewithal to get those meals out. But um, it, what would we need to do, Janet? Would it be a a budget transfer? Would it be what what would to you know the quickest we could? Just as just for options' sake, this isn't necessarily curious. We'll just switch this over. Um, there are a lot of options. Uh, a budget transfer should we at the end of the year find that we have funds available, but that's only for this operating year. So any budget transfer is only once you get to the end of June, it's done. Yep. The ARPA funds to say they're good forever. Once we encumber them, they stay, they roll over from year to year. You could do a special appropriation if they found in the future they need it. Um, I will say that rating agencies, when we go for bonding, do not like towns that do special appropriations. Um, they want you to plan it out a little bit better. Uh, my big thought is that um, re using the ARPA money might be the best option right okay. now. And then as we get to um, next year and the budget period, looking at if, if there's still fiscal problems with that, with the CRT, to be able to do a transfer, you have contingency. Um, that's one of the reasons it's there for broad anticipated emergencies that you need to cover. Um, and then maybe as you look at next year's budget, if this continues and we're seeing this as an ongoing thing, build it into your budget. Thank you for that. Um, but those would be my suggestions. Great. I, 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 thank you for that answer. With that being the case, I, I, I'm certainly in favor of looking at funding this entire allocation in, in, in ARPA so that you can hold on to the ARPA that you have for those other really important purposes. So thank you, Janet. Councilor Floyd, Deputy Mayor Rada. Um, yeah, two, one, one question, two questions maybe, question and a comment. 
Um, I'm looking at um, what you've given us, and it looks as though the total cost for replacement is ninety five thousand. About ninety five thousand, correct? Okay. And we have um, a resolution that we could move on tonight, which I would strongly suggest that we move. Uh, the only question I have is there's a big blank space where the dollar amount should be. So is it 75,000 or 95,000? We are estimating that we can cover that 20,000 with donations, which is why we're only asking for the 75. And I said, if people are more generous, if people, if we, you know, and they have been so far and we're very grateful, um, we can put that ARPA money aside if this happens again next year, if it continues past October 1st. Yeah, yeah. So my, I, I am in agreement with um, Councilor Mankey that I would like to see us move this resolution tonight. And then, I'm sorry, if I could just very quickly, Janet, would you mind reminding us what do we currently have in un unallocated ARPA? I think it's something like 110 or something or... No, or um, it's like 240, that. right? It's, it's, yeah, it's over 200,000. Oh, okay. You still right. have left. And um, the ARPA money, and, and the reason you will not usually hear me say this, um, <laughs> but I want you to spend it. <laughs> and it, it has to be encumbered right. by December of this year. Mm -hmm. It has to be spent by December 2020, uh, 2026. But, and I'm having to remind everybody who has a project on the board, <laughs> I want to see a purchase order. I want to see you spend it. So at least, you know, you, you should plan again. and get it out yeah, there. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, Councilor Madrigo. Oh, um, yeah, no, I totally agree with um, the 75,000. And, you know, I was also thinking, just like Deputy Mayor Rada, um, funding the, the full amount. But then part of me says, if you're confident that you could get that $20,000, this is this is kind of an emergency. I mean, I I, I kind of like the idea of people giving back as well. Mm -hmm. That the people who are using the program or people in the community recognizing that that we're all in this together. And if we can, and if you can manage, you know, the twenty thousand dollars and and other donations, and we we um, can cover from the ARPA funds the seventy five thousand. Um, but it's still going to be it's going to be a community effort, and I kind of like that in a way. So I agree with the seventy five thousand. And um, towards the end of the year, I mean, because the, the CRT budget is going to be coming out September first, I guess. So right? October first. October first. Mm -hmm. So we still have two months if we have to go to some leftover art funds. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be able to do it. Thank you, Councilor Bajaj. Councilor Nagel. Uh, I agree with what uh, Councilor uh, Bedreko said. Uh, and uh, if we have it at 75, I think you've gotten the impression uh, even more so that if we can and we can find a way, we would be willing to fund to, to cover what the program is. But I, I do think the community should have a, a chance to personally come forth with an input as well, uh, because uh, Newington historically has been very generous when it has come to causes like this. So um, I'd be in support of the 75,000, but you know, you can come back and you have a, a an ear who's listening. Councilor Nagel. Would you like to read the resolution now, Councilor Nagel? Certainly not. <laughs> not that it was written out, but I think it's helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Resolve, the Newington Town Council hereby endorsed the use of American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA funds in the amount of 75,000 for replacement meals on wheels and congregate lunch program meals at the seniors and disabled center to address services service reductions to the program due to state and federal budget shortfalls and service restrictions, uh, details of which are included in an attached memorandum. Second. second. Motion by uh, Councilor Mankey, second by Deputy Mayor Rada. Any discussion? None, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Just bang the gavel for that. There <laughs> <laughs> you go. Thank, thank you. For you. Thank you. Your thank, thank you for everything you, you do. And your phone calls on Friday. <laughs> See you tomorrow. All right. Moving along now to uh, old business item C: ball, for, ball field groomer machine, parks and recreation by Parks and Recreation. It's a bid waiver request. 
Uh, I believe uh, I see Mr. DeMeo online and she play here. Um, there were some questions on the last meeting about um, the the uh, machine. If you wanted to go ahead, Mr. DeMeo, and uh, sort of update us on sort of some of our questions and if folks have more, that would be okay. Sure. Good evening, Mayor and Town Councilors. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, Clay and I, I think Clay's on, our park supervisor's on also. No, I'm here. And, yep. And um, just want to let you know, we put together a pretty extensive report to all of you, and it describes, I think we went over every single question that was presented to you at the last council meeting and answered all those questions. It also gave you some information about the machine, but I will quickly summarize, I'm, I'm assuming you guys all read it, but I'll quickly summarize that this machine is unique and it's it's powerful and it's the answer to when you take on more jobs and more responsibilities like our department has in regards to more fields, soccer, lacrosse, football, little league and um, softball. This machine allows one person to work with it instead of multi a month, multi amounts of staff. So it provides an opportunity for us to grade the fields. The machine itself is 33,000. So it's comparable to whatever the gentleman said, he compared it to another machine. But what's unique about this, it's patented in Washington, DC, and it has seven or eight attachments uh, that provide such a, an unbelievable service. Our park staff is so excited. We've tried it, we've demonstrated it. Since we've demonstrated it to other towns, we used our field at Clem Lemire. I believe Glastonbury and Bristol already bought one. So we're just trying to get ahead of the curve here. Um, we want to make the purchase as quick as we can because of the spring season and summer season. And it's a machine that will provide surface drainage. It'll, it, I'll just give you an example. So this, this leveling process, this machine, you put a tripod on its second base, for instance, it sends a laser grading laser beam to the machine. Automatically, it makes the blade go up and down in, in to a half a percent grade the field off without using your own eye or your own feelings as a driver. So it automatically um, grades the, the field so that the when it rains, the water drains to the surf to the sides. It's called surface drainage to the to the four inch pipe that we have around the exterior parts of the field. So it provides quicker, quicker drainage, better drainage, and then it allows the kids to play quicker. And that's at every level from seven, you know, three-year-olds all the way to high school and adult softball and adult baseball programs and, and fields. So um, we think it's the number one. All experts are telling us this is the machine. Um, there's also uh, eight major league ball fields, uh, ball teams use it at a high level. But really, we don't even care too much about that. We really care that it's just endorsed by everyone. It's the best. And uh, we think it's going to be a tremendous help to Newington and save us both in staff time and in material costs. And I think there is where you you really find the, the results for, for, the, for the town of Newington. So we're strongly endorsing it. We're, we're hoping that you guys will uh, consider it because it's no other no other company and no other machine can match match up with what this can produce for us. Thank you, Mr. DeMeo. Uh, any questions from counselors on this? Uh, Councilor Rodrigo. Uh, this is from ARPA funds, correct? Correct. So we've already correct. allocated the funds, correct? correct? So it's just a question of, um, of the purchase and the bid waiver. Purchasing policy. Yep. Purchasing policy. Okay, thank you. Other questions from... Councilor Mankey. And just for the record, there's only one, you're saying there's only one company that provides this, this piece of equipment? Yeah, I could explain that better. In, the, in our report, it's, it's pretty well laid out for you. But what happens is this alter company has territories. So our territory is uh, the salesman is in New, New Hampshire and he's got the Northeast in New, in New York. So we can only buy from that one territory. He gave us the example. We talked to him the next day and he gave us the example that a guy from Georgia called him and said, hey, can we get parts for our machine? He said, I'm sorry, I can't sell it to you. You have to go to your territory in Georgia. So, yes, the answer, Tim, is that there's other companies in the country that sell the equipment, but they can only sell it to their territory. 
and no other company provides a similar product. That's right? correct. The, the machine that the other person was talking about, you know, dragging behind, this is a zero turn machine where a guy stands on it and can actually turn zero in, in around in a circle right in, in place where when you drag a piece of equipment on a tractor, you don't you go off the dirt, off the clay, onto the grass, off the grass, onto the clay, and it provides it, it makes lips and unlevel positions. It actually makes areas unsafe. So this machine puts an end to all that stuff. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for the info, Bill. Um, in your packet here, you'd say that, uh, you know, this should save on some uh, contractor services that come up to like, you know, almost a thousand a day. And then you also spoke about the staffing time and the material cost that we'd save. Can you just elaborate a little bit more on like what it'll look like once we get the machine going? Yeah, well, you're going to get more level and flat and more consistent playing fields. But I can give you quick two examples. Uh, the council a couple years ago, um, parents came to a board of ed meeting and complained about the two softball fields at the high school. We spent uh, $30,000, roughly, let's just say $29,000 twice, two different contractors to quickly laser grade, dig out the old material, laser grade the uh, Dura Edge material. So that was just, that happened like every seven years or something. We'll have this machine and be able to do it several times in one season for crying out loud. It'll be unbelievable for the opportunity to, to keep the, the playing field level and, and great. And it will stop us from adding material to the Dura edge. It'll keep all the material in the area, in the clay and keep it leveled. It'll push the high spots to the low spots and, and make everything level. So I think it's, you're gonna you're gonna find the savings in material and but better than that, it's gonna be just a better playing field all around. And if I can, I will I will just give kudos to our park staff. We have 13 very dedicated, hardworking guys. And if you could see the smiles on their faces when they tried the machine at the demonstration at Glen Lemire, they go, they were going, Holy cow, this is gonna be unbelievable if we could get this. So I think you'll score big points with the staff and, and the staff will score big points with all the parents and the coaches that and the kids that play on the fields. Thank you. Deputy Marotta. Yeah. Um, no, I found the answer to my question, Bill, <laughs> in, the pa in the paperwork. So thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Good. Councilor Nagel. Oh, yeah. Just a minor question, uh, Bill. Um, some people, possibly even the person who, uh, from the public who uh, uh, doubted the need for this, this type of machine, uh, uh, specifically uh, zeroed in on the word laser, which to some people means Star Wars, who aren't really <laughs> tuned in to, to uh, machinery of this sort. Is this something that is now common? Is this something that serves if you could say a little bit more uh, a realistic purpose rather than a <laughs> futuristic addition. I know you've talked about well, it to some no, extent. It's, it's, yeah, I would, the, the answer is it's becoming a common practice. This thing is being sold like rapid fire to almost every town. It's, uh, it's the way the, of the future. It's in, it, actually, the future is here. It's today. And I think with all the litigious, lo litigious lawsuits that are happening with kids getting hurt and, and adults getting hurt on holes in the ground or, you know, when parents go and rake the fields and, and put the dirt on the, on the grass and stuff like this, it's going to limit or minimize that kind of exposure for the town. So we're going to win on a lot of, you're going to win in a lot of areas and it's not, it's not star Wars. It's, it's the real deal. Now everybody's using it. Okay. It's good to hear a realistic uh, answer that may calm some people's uh, uh, thoughts when they, um, uh, a common person who doesn't know what you what you know about uh, uh, how this is uh, really very critically uh, uh, needed and and mentioning about people getting hurt and so on adds uh, another reason for why uh, this particular machinery is uh, a very positive addition to your uh, equipment. Thanks. Thank you, Councilor Nagel. 
Um, thank you for uh, coming on tonight, Phil. Uh, my only ask would be that I get a chance to ride this thing and try it out. Uh, it sounds awesome. <laughs> um, I don't know if we I, I want you, you. We don't want you wrecking it, Mayor. We don't want you wrecking it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're wrong, man. Yeah, that's all right. But I uh, want us to know that. <laughs> Well, we appreciate you uh, you coming on and answering those questions. Um, I know we have a resolution in the packet. Um, I feel I think I feel fine to move forward with this um, tonight. Um, I think we've heard a lot and it's already allocated. So I think um, uh, I will have a council. Uh, Deputy Mayor Riley, would you mind reading the resolution? Certainly. Resolved. Whereas the town council has the power under Section 813 of the Newington Charter to waive the process of procuring sealed bids and Whereas town personnel have determined that the ABI force zero turn vehicle models Z23SL or Z23SLT field groomers are sole source products distributed exclusively by ABI attachments of Mishawaka in Indiana. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town council hereby grants a waiver as requested by William DeMeo, superintendent of Parks and Grounds for the requirement of sealed bids for the purchase of an ABI force zero turn vehicle model Z23SL or Z23SLT field groomer with an estimated cost of $54,825. Second. Motion by <clears throat> Deputy Van Ratta, second by uh, Councilor Ford. Uh, any discussion on this? Just one question, Bill. Do you want to rethink your uh... Denial of the mayor to drive it. <laughs> okay, I'll, uh, if, if the vote goes eight to one, I would rather I'll let the mayor drive it. <laughs> we'll just Thank we'll you. just put him in an open soccer field. That way, he can't get anywhere. <laughs> make him make him wear a helmet. That's it. I was just gonna say. <laughs> we, we, yeah. I, 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 I'll take that comment back. I made a mistake. <laughs> we'll, we'll get a we'll photo. We'll get it. We'll get it. You on the other. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Be like careful, yeah, um, no, I just want to say that I do um, appreciate the information that you provided, Bill. But I also want to say to um, the you know the public that this this was delayed a week or two because one of the members of the public um, did some research and you know something caught their eye and they did some research and some background and they came to us with questions. So, um, in in my opinion, that's. It, as much as it's our job to to question and do research, I appreciate the member of the public that came forward into that as well. And I appreciate right. the fact that, Bill, you, you had the backup to um, respond very quickly. So all in all, I mean, this is not a waste of, of anybody's time, including um, the public who had some questions on this. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and I always, you know, I'm my door is wide open and my phone is always ready on my desk. So I'm happy to answer any questions. We don't make any decisions without the best interest of the taxpayers in mind. So we tried to get the best equipment at the you know least amount of people and, and try to save as much money and staff time as we possibly can in every aspect of our job. So thank you, Councillor. Discussion, we have a second, oh, we have a motion and a second on the table. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposed? No, motion carried unanimously. Thank you so much for coming tonight, Mr. DeMeo. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Very good. All right. Includes old business. So we'll move on to a new business item, uh, agenda item 6A, Senior Disabled Center American Rescue Plan Act funding. Come on up, Barbara. <laughs> or Jamie, who is on chat? Yes, we did. <laughs> Let's do it. So thank you again for your support for the nutrition program. Um, this is good news, but I initially brought it tonight for tonight as a potential funding solution for the meals. Um, since as of now, that looks like it's been taken care of under the um, general town harbor funding, I could introduce this to you as a, um, something that we look forward to uh, pursuing. The Senior Center recently received $90,000 in ARPA funding, um, which is completely separate from the funding that the town has received the most recent $2 million allocation. Um, it was $10 million was allocated to state senior centers in Connecticut, nonprofit or municipal senior centers. The funding was um, the state unit on aging was responsible for receiving the funding and determining how it would be distributed among the 202 senior centers in the state. They utilized some demographic info to make a calculation and found and Newington will receive $90,000 of that funding. Um, 
it cannot be transferred or used elsewhere. It has to be used by a senior center. The parameters that the state unit on aging set are some of them are the same as the ARPA funding that you've already approved a couple, you know, several times now, and that it can't be used for operating expenses that would lower your operating budget or anything else. It has to be used for things that are, I guess, extras for lack of a better term that would assist with um, specifically COVID mitigation or recovery from the pandemic. And it has to be under the categories of either facilities improvement or programs. Um, we have to send our proposals to the state unit on aging by the end of June. And the same with the um, town received ARPA funding, they have to be encumbered by the end of the fiscal year and spent by the end of 2026. I'm sorry, the end of the calendar year and then spent by the end of 2026. So initially um, I had intended to bring this to you after the budget process because you don't want to complicate things with the budget. Um, and I did spend, and I'm, I'm glad now that I did between that and spending, you know, being in the town manager's office, I didn't have as much time to devote to this earlier in the winter to bring it to you. And I guess it ended up being a little bit of a silver lining because we do have, you know, options if we needed to for nutrition. So with that being said, I have several proposals of how we can utilize that $90,000, which again is a pretty significant chunk of money for the senior center, you know, considering what we normally we used to operate um, each year. So in the memo to you explains a little bit more about how the ARPA funding works in terms of the senior centers and the requirements, but also there are several proposals. The first one was the Meals on Wheels um, meal replacement, but since you generously just allocated town ARPA funding to that, you can see what the others are and they all, they range in anything from small items, um, one-time things to larger like renovations and some renovations to our garden, some programming, expanding, expanding our programming and the way we utilize some of our program spaces um, and introducing some new program as well, programs as well. Um, some community outreach to let people, you know, remind people that we exist if they need our services and some very specific COVID mitigation items that would be understandably be one-time purchases, but would be fall under the realm of this uh, funding. So everything is kind of a lengthy uh, document here explaining everything. This is something that the council does not need to act on tonight. It would just be at some point before the end of June. Um, but just, you know, if there are any questions, I can go through these if you'd like, or you can read through them at your own convenience. Are there specific items that you'd like to highlight? That, and, and I know that there are types of programs mm -hmm. and sure. there are 33 categories that you've right. identified. Right. Uh, maybe speak to those a little bit. Sure. If anyone else has any questions from entertainment. I would say outside of the nutrition, the top priority I was going to um, ask for is to um, do some improvements to the giving garden which is a volunteer run organic garden that benefits the Newington Human Services Food Bank. It was it's in its 10th year now, actually it's 11th year now. Um, and it's completely run by volunteers. It's two very long raised garden beds. And then they've expanded to include some raised pallet gardens and then a couple of in-ground beds. Those in-ground garden beds are great, but they're not accessible to somebody who has mobility limitations. So I would like to utilize $10,000 of the... Um, ARPA funding to replace the ground level beds with raised beds. So for all of these, we did the cost research. I mean, obviously it could fluctuate a little bit, but this, you know, looked at the materials and supplies we need for each item. And that benefits, it's a program, but it's also a facility improvement and it helps, it, it, you know, it, it, raising the garden beds will make them safer and more accessible and it'll increase outdoor programming and physical activity options for members um, and it'll help benefit the food bank. So that's one of the items that I would believe would be a priority. Um, Another one is smaller, it's only $4,000. Now these do not need to be CIP items. You know, um, they can be smaller items, they could be one-time items, um, was to purchase some small exercise equipment. So during the pandemic, we allowed people to borrow, when we were, our building was closed, we allowed people to borrow like exercise bands, pedometers, um, hand weights to take home to exercise, which is great, but now we're open and people are using that equipment in our exercise room. So we were hoping to create a lending closet where people can borrow those things to exercise at home or outside or on their, and some people prefer to work out on the privacy of their own home or whatever. So that would allow people to borrow that equipment. It's a smaller item. Um, two days before everything shut down for the pandemic, I attended a meeting with a bunch of other senior centers um, about something called an adventure club. So there are like 40 of us in a little conference room on March 11th, 2020. And um, we, there were a couple of senior centers in the state you do the South Windsor is a leader where they provide programming um, that gets people out of the senior centers 
to touring local museums, going on hikes, going bird watching, uh, educational programs. They don't all have to be necessarily physical programs, but you know, where you're out hiking or walking. So they could, you know, they could appeal to all sorts of levels of, of physical ability, but um, they get people out and going and socializing and programming that's taken outside of the center. Um, I thought that was a really neat idea. We were, I was doing a lot of work on that. I said prior to everything shutting down. So now I think a little bit of seed money to help with that, I think would be a great program. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we, we'd asked for somebody to do an information campaign, um, 11,000 11, of New England's population is age 55 and up. So, you know, a third of our population, we want to make sure that people, we can't, we can't have all 11,000 of them at the building because we can't fit them all, but we would um, like people to know that we exist and what services we provide should, should they need them or should they want to just check it out and see, you know, how it could benefit them. Um, one of the programs that I was had removed based on the um, nutrition funding that maybe we want to put back in is a maker space, which if you're not familiar with that as a place for people to go and work on crafts and things that I don't know, right now it's a wood shop and it's, it's great. We have great woodworking equipment. People who go through the safety training can come and utilize it as a workshop, but it is underutilized at this point. So um, creating a makerspace will give people accessible space to create things, you know, whatever they're interested in. We can do classes, we can do um, craft programs, we can get like technology in there that people might not have access to at home, like 3D printers, um, tools that they might not have. We keep the woodworking equipment, but we would reorganize the space and make it much more user-friendly. And then we could offer programming there as well. And then finally, um, some new furniture for our TV lounge where people can go watch movies or TV or do a puzzle. We have an electric organ in there that people play. Um, they just basically gather to socialize. They play wee bowling, which is really fun. Um, and But the furniture is kind of outdated and old, and I would love to get some power lift chairs, um, which we don't currently have. So those are the basic, the major items that we were looking at for the funding. Okay, we have some questions. Uh, Councilor Kiniakis. Um, I know that happened like 30 minutes ago, but now you have you know a little bit more extra money. Um, so... Do you do you think that you would just add those funds to the current plans that you have proposed here, or would you maybe write something uh, like a new project that we would have to review in another meeting? Like, how do you think that you're going to go about using the extra money now? Before the news we got from CRP, I had every dollar of the ninety thousand proposed, mm -hmm. so I took some of those out to allocate to ask for thirty five thousand dollars worth of. Um, nutrition funding, so I would just put them right back in. Perfect. So everything on your list here is what I'd be asking for. Okay. Let's walk. Yeah. Uh, um, no, I'm, I'm really glad that all of this is going to be done, and it all seems um, I wish it was more than 90000 First thing that's coming to my mind is the stage. But how much did that cost? Um, we haven't had a recent estimate, but a lot more than 90000 <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> We can repurpose I mean, the senior center doesn't have a ton of storage. So, I mean, I would love to use it for some a usable program space, but realistically we do need some storage too. So if we can use, if we can be, um, if we can repurpose some of our existing program space, such as the wood shop for 15,000, then I think, you know, that's a good use of the funding and maybe some day down the road, we could make a CIP request for the stage. Um, I was just, the adventure club. I really like that idea, but, um, that's kind of like just a one-year thing where there's 7,500. Um, it would be an ongoing, I mean, or else you'd have to budget for it next year for a continuation. I've been using it as seed money. Okay. Um, we could get that going with that. And then see what the some, interest is. yeah, see what the interest is. Some of the senior centers charge for their adventure program. So it's like a club that you join. I'm not hugely in favor of that because we typically try not to charge for our programs unless we have to um, cover costs of like materials and, you know, three to $5 in that case. So if that's something that catches on, we might ask for some funding for it in the future, but also with something that we would probably get sponsored as we do with everything else. Okay. And then, um, I'm sorry, I had a lot of, um, the COVID-19 related transportation mm -hmm. services. So you're going to, is that going to, uh, I guess, are they going to use this, the van? I mean, how, how is that going to work? And is it only going to be, okay, you know, at 10 o'clock, anybody who has COVID related? I, I just don't know how it's going to work. Sure. This is, would be something until it runs out. Okay. So it's not going to be something we would ask to renew. 
but it would be for transportation outside of our dialer ride. So one thing that we've noticed that a lot of older adults in, in town have an issue with is getting rides to things that are outside of our dialer ride like limitations, like we're op- we operate a certain number of hours every day. And um, so there are other options for people to go get their vaccines or pick up medications or go to doctor's appointments or whatever related to COVID. We actually get a lot of requests separately from that. About a year ago, we, I applied for and received um, $50,000 in vac- uh, COVID and flu vaccine funding from the National Council on Aging. And we're the fiduciary for this uh, Newington Central Connecticut Health District and their member towns. So we received fifty thousand dollars, which we've pretty much depleted because the program ends next month anyway, um, to help remove barriers from people who want to get vaccinations um, to be able to get them, older adults. And the biggest barrier that we found, besides people being able to make an appointment, like if you don't have um, internet access, it's really hard to make an appointment. Um, was transportation to and from vaccine appointments. So a lot of that funding went towards that. And I thought we could translate some of that specifically into Newington specific folks who need help um, getting rides to appointments related to COVID. And also we can't, some of these, like there are certain public transportation that will come and pick you up if you are actually actively ill. They have um, filtration and things that we're not equipped to do. So we turn, maybe not so much now, but in the height of the COVID pandemic, we did turn down a lot of people call and said, I have COVID, I have to get to the doctor. And sorry, we can't help you. You can get use this service, but you have to pay for it. And it caused a barrier. Now, this has to be COVID specific in terms of the um, approval. But realistically, we can use this funding to help with any kind of illness, respiratory illness, That's any right. kind of vaccination. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I tied it into COVID this way, but we would utilize it for anybody who needs some sort of medical appointment ride and can't get one through our normal means. That's great because yeah. especially yeah. you know outside of the the region the area um, transportation is needed for older adults and then just one more it's just um, question the air purifier air purifiers yep. for small spaces I mean that's really a need um, particularly for older adults with respiratory um, chronic illnesses. Um, is that enough? Six thousand dollars? Yes, I don't have the info in front of me, but I priced them all out. We do have a few, but we don't have enough. So this would be remaining high quality medical grade um, filters and then some replacement fil- you know, replacement like the actual filters that go inside. Um, and again, that wouldn't just be pertaining to COVID. It would be anything during the season when everybody's sick and everything's going around that would, would be helpful. This is a good job of one shot, you know, use it of the money. <laughs> so I think it's, it's a lot of people will benefit and it's different programs or activities. So good job. Thank you. Council Floyd. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I had the same question as Council Petraco as it relates to the COVID, and I'm glad that um, potentially could be used for larger purposes, other preventative care of some kind. I think that's great. Um, and this is what's so exciting about the ARPA is that it, you can, you know, get this seed money for these really exciting things, whether it's the adventure program or the maker space, or I mean, these are these are really wonderful programs, or at the very least, the starts of programs. Uh, that will that will really shape our community. So I just want to thank you for all the work that you've done to pull all these together. Um, one question I had, uh, the, or I guess the other question I had was um, on the information campaign, which I think is wonderful. So often we'll hear from folks who just are unsure about how to access services and, you know, that would like uh, some more information and would benefit from that. Um, any uh, part of this cost estimate or any interest at all in uh, providing this information campaign in multiple languages, um, suiting, you know, different communities needs as, as you know, you might think necessary or, or otherwise, is that in here or do you? Yes, absolutely. It would be? Great. So what I've learned um, in working at the senior and disabled center over the past several years is that you need to reach out to people in many ways to actually reach them. And that does include providing um, materials in different languages, and it pr- includes providing materials in different formats. So, um, putting thing, mailing things to people, you're going to reach. You mail it out to everybody, but a lot of them will get thrown away. So then, okay, we'll put it in the newspaper, but not everybody gets the newspaper anymore. You put it online. Some folks go online, some don't. So you have to hit everybody. You have to hit everything in order to reach everybody. So that's yeah, that's all included in here. Great, wonderful. Thank you for that comprehensive approach. That's all I have. The questions or comments, Virginia? Thank you so much for presenting this. And this is great yeah. that uh, you have the opportunity to use this fund. 
fill some hollow holes <laughs> for sure. Thank you. All right, we will uh, move along to uh, item seven, written oral communications from town manager. Anything for us? I'm good. Anyone? I've talked enough. <laughs> <today. laughs> Thank you. Hey, Jamie again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then we have a council liaison committee reports. Do you have anything on that today? Or? I'll wait till Tuesday. Very good. Wait till Tuesday. Very good. Thank you, council. All right, we'll move on again. We're rounding out the evening. Back to our public participation for agenda items. Um, if you're in the room and like to speak in public participation, please feel free to come up now. And if you are on Zoom, please use uh, the raise hand function in Zoom. And then do you have someone in Zoom with their hand raised? Right ahead, Ms. Lyons. Rose Lyons, 46 Elton Drive. Um, I just have to say, while I uh, agree that it's nice that the community is asked to contribute toward the need to pay for the uh, cuts in the funding for the meals, I don't recall any other of the wants that have been paid for out of ARPA funds having any contributions from the community. I would have loved to have seen the entire amount of the 95,000 be given to the senior center, but that's just me and just my opinion. And you know, I'm not gonna go on Facebook and say it, but I will say it right at these meetings, exactly how I feel. Um, I think that Jamie does a wonderful job at the senior center and Barbara has stepped right into those shoes and done everything that she can do possibly from what I'm understanding and hearing from the people at the senior center to keep things rolling while Jamie is on loan as town manager. So uh, with that being said, thank you. And I appreciate everything that you're doing with the budget. And I'll see you at the next meeting, good Lord willing. Thank you. Anybody else in the room or over Zoom I would like to come on? Come on. We don't bite most of the time. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Hi, Sean. Very good. Mayor, Council, Town Manager Jamie, thank you. Um, I'll take my three minutes. I'll be quick so we're not here all night. Um, for 105 years, the Newington Fire Department has. Say your name for the record. Oh, I'm sorry. Brian Whalen, 22 Pebble Drive. Um, for 105 years, uh, and this is as we're designing and um, deliberating budgets, uh, for 105 years, we've been. Um, very diligent in our replacement pl plan of our fire trucks. Um, it seems now we have some outside influences that are coming to the town and saying, well, they don't need to replace their trucks at 20 years and they can go at 25 years. For 105 years, we've been doing it and it has worked great. And we can't jeopardize public safety with putting a 25 year old truck at replacement <clears throat> that will eventually leave the town at 30 years old. Currently right now, our spare engine is 30 years old this year. So when we, it got replaced at 20 years, we still kept it for another 10. So we're not getting rid of that truck at 20 years old. Some people think that we can go this 25 years we're jeopardizing the public, we're jeopardizing our ISO rating, and we're also not in compliance with the NFBA. So when we're designing budget budgets, our biggest problem that is totally out of control of the department is build times. We could order a truck this July 1st when funding's come available, we're not seeing that truck for 34 to 36 months, three years. And it's industry-wide, no matter which builder you go to. So I think we have to take a good look at how we do business and when do we need to start funding these trucks at 18 years old so we can get them at 21, 17 years old so we can get them at 20. We really need to think hard about that. But the fire department doesn't tell. We're certainly not going to have a 25-year-old police cruiser on the road. We're certainly not going to have a 25-year-old town highway truck plowing our roads because we don't know the reliability of it. 
And we certainly can't have a 25 to 30 year old first line fire truck going to a structure fire or an emergency call in this town. Um, we, we have to keep our trucks, which we the town does a very good job at maintaining it. But after our 20 year mark, we don't know what's going to happen with those trucks. So just wanted to leave you with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the room or over Zoom that would like to uh, participate in public participation? Seeing none, we'll move on to uh, remarks by councilors. Anybody have any uh, comments on tonight's meeting? meeting? Councilor Mankey. I just had one quick comment, maybe a question for you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I applaud your decision last meeting to to go with a firm for, for legal services, and I think that's a, a great thing. Like, like, my only question is, is I think in the budget, we, we're budgeting as this single source, or a, a retainer, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, Shannon, if you could figure out whether that budgeted amount is enough to cover this new new firm, I think that's important. We've, I'd rather do that now than get into the budget cycle somewhere in November and say, oh, we don't have enough money, now we're, now we're in trouble. Um, and I, I may have missed this, but just a quick question. Is this the same firm that represents the, the Board of Ed? I believe it is, yes. Okay, so my concern would be if, if we're if we're negotiating an MOU and we have one set of interests and they, the Board of Ed has another set of interests and it's going to the same firm, well, I assume we're getting separate. Or separate, separate, separate divisions. Separate, yeah, separate, yeah. separate offices anyway. Yeah, separate yeah. divisions, yes, for sure. Yeah, all. Yeah, that's yeah. All. So, okay, it's, that's what my only concern. No, 100%. But I think it's that important was, to look yeah. at the budget now. We did it. And, and I, you know, I think this is a new, we never tried this before. So I, I think this is, 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 is kind of, you know, kind of um, new territory. So I want to make sure that the budget can support it. So I think if Janet can just give us a quick, a quick rundown to make sure that we have we, that what we've budgeted for the single person retainer is right. going to be enough to cover this. So, Thank you. Before we get to too far along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I'll. Yeah, I'll we'll sending an email on that later. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Mike. Any other uh, comments, remarks by Councilors? All right. Seeing none. I want to thank everyone for a great meeting tonight. Uh, great two meetings. I thank everyone who came on public participation and the public hearing, and thank everyone who spoke tonight. Um, you know, we got a lot done, and I think we still got a lot ahead of us to get done. But I, I feel pretty good about the way tonight's meeting went and uh, how we're moving forward. So this is great. I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. second. Oh, motion by Councilor Floor, second by Deputy Mayor Rada. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Uh, any opposed? We are adjourned.